Hey guys, how are you going? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the native date object in JavaScript. Okay, so um, first off, before I get into the tutorial, um, I just want to say that I think in most cases, um, you're going to want to use some sort of external library such as moment.js to handle all of your date and time um, getting and setting and operations. Um, but some cases, or um, in some cases, you might find that this native date object is more than enough um, to suit your own needs. Okay, so in this video, we're going to cover the native JavaScript date object. Okay, so um, essentially, um, an instance of a date or a date object um, represents a point in time. Okay, and of course, it lets you do basic operations with date and time. Um, so, uh, it's much easier to demonstrate using code as usual. So, let's go inside the text editor right here, and we can begin inside the JavaScript um, by firstly uh, just looking at how to actually create a date object. So, uh, let's make a new variable up here, or um, declare a new variable called D. And uh, down here, we're going to look at the um, the four main ways that you can make date objects. So uh, the first one here looks like this. So I can say D is equal to new date, just like this. So by doing this, by putting new date, I'm calling the constructor for um, for the date. Um, so uh, this just means that, of course, D is now a date object. And uh, by calling the constructor with uh, no arguments provided, it will make a new date instance or object for the current date and time. So right here, this D, when the page loads up, it's going to represent a date object for the current date time. So what I can do is down here is I can say console.log. I'm going to log out D dot to string. So calling the toString method on the date object. I'm going to save this now and refresh the browser. And in the console, we can see here we get Wednesday, August 7th at this time. Then it says my time zone information. All right, cool. So that is uh, the most basic way to create a date object. Now, I can do things like get, set, and display uh, certain things with this instance of date or this date object. So. Uh, let's take a look at the second way to create an instance of date. And this will be done by using the amount of milliseconds since uh, January 1st, 1970. So let's go down here, D equals new date. And now we're going to pass in the amount of milliseconds. So I've got an example here. So I've got 11644110654567. Okay, so uh, let's save this now and refresh and see what actually happened. So refresh, and now we can see here, we get November 25th, 2006. Um, it has created a new date instance to represent um, the point in time, which was this many milliseconds past Unix time, or the 1st of January, 1970. So the third way I want to cover in this video is going to be by passing in a date time string. So, uh, just a quick disclaimer, um, according to the Mozilla Developer Network or the MDN uh, documentation, um, this method right here is not recommended or is strongly discouraged. Uh, the reason for it is because um, there are differences in the browser which is running the JavaScript. Some browsers might interpret things differently. but. I found personally that if I was to provide an ISO 8601 date time string to the date constructor, it's going to work just fine and consistently across the different browsers. So for example, I'm going to pass in here an ISO 8601 formatted date time string. This might look something like this. So I'll say 2019-08-02, then put T 11.30.00. Uh, plus 10 colon zero zero. This right here is saying obviously 2019, the 8th month, so August, August 2nd, then using T to separate the date part from the time part. The time part says 11.30 in the morning or AM. 
um, and this plus 10 is my UTC or my GMT offset. So I'm 10 hours ahead of UTC, so um, that's just representing this uh, with this daytime stream. So now I'm going to save this and refresh, and we can see here what we get is Friday, August 2nd, 2019, 11.30 a.m. in my time zone. So, um, as I said, using this method by passing in an ISO 8601 string, which I think uh, most database, um, or most databases, or uh, most uh, server-side frameworks or languages should be able to provide you with anyway. So, you might be okay to just use this uh, method for constructing your date instances. All right, cool. So. Um, the final way here I'm going to cover is going to be by passing in the individual parts that make up the date itself. So for example, I'm going to say new date, just like this. I'm going to say here, first I'm going to specify the year. For example, let's put in 2019. Then as the second argument, you're going to put in the month index. So by index, it just means that it starts at zero and it ends at 11. So for example, 11 would be December and zero would be January. So to uh, specify August, for example, the eighth month, you would put seven. You can then specify your day. So two, 11 as the hour. Minutes is going to be the, um, the fifth argument. So 30, then you got seconds and then you got milliseconds. So now we've constructed um, a new date instance based on these values and the time zone is going to be the local time zone from the device. So in this case, it's going to be my time zone, which is of course 10 hours um, plus UTC or the, um, the Australian time zone. Cool. So now I'm going to save this and refresh and we can see here we get, of course, Friday, August 2nd, 11.30. 27 seconds in. Alrighty, of course, uh, GMT plus 10 or plus, yeah, plus 10 hours. Cool. So also with this uh, with this fourth kind of constructor, um, you can actually not specify anything after the month. So all you got to do is provide the year and the month, and that is good enough. For example, let's save this and refresh, and we can see here um, it has chosen the first day of the month of August. Uh, the first hour, minute, and second. So it's going to default to the first value of each part if you don't actually provide it. So just keep that in mind also. And that is all I have for uh, constructing date objects. So now let's actually use them and uh, cover things like getters, setters, and uh, formatting or displaying. So let's go down here. And of course, we're going to work with the most recent creation of the date instance, and that is this one right here. So 11.30 at 27 seconds in on the 2nd of August 2019. So let's go down here and say console.log d.get full year. So the get full year uh, method is going to give you the year of the date instance. Pretty straightforward. Save this, refresh, and we get right here, 2019, of course. And uh, we've got a few more of those. Essentially, uh, these are going to work for um, all your different parts of the daytime string. So if I was to press dot here, we can see we get all these options. For example, let's just do get month, and let's do also uh, get date. Let's do get minutes and get seconds. Okay, cool. So I'm going to save this and refresh, and what do we get? We get this right here. So um, here with the um, with the month, you actually get the month index, even though uh, the method is called get month. You get the index. In this case, August is the eighth month, so you get seven for the month index. Everything else works as normal. You get the second day of the month. You get uh, 30 minutes in, and you get 30 seconds. Okay, so essentially they are all your getters and setters and there might be um, a few more here and there which I actually missed, but they all work the same way. Okay, so also with these getters, um, right here, when I say get this, get that, these are all in the local time zone of the device. So you're getting it with the device time zone uh, in mind. 
So of course, in the background here, when you have this date, um, it is actually storing uh, the amount of milliseconds since uh, Unix time or um, the 1st of um, January 1970. So essentially when you press get full year, it takes that, that UTC time, it will add the device's uh, time zone offset, in my case 10 hours, and then it's going to give you um, the year or the month, etc., whatever you specify here. So. To actually get the UTC uh, version of each one of these parts, it's quite straightforward. You can simply say, for example, console.log d.getUTC, then you put in your part. For example, let's get UTC hours. Save this and refresh, and uh, we get right here, 1. So of course, I'm 10 hours ahead of uh, UTC or GMT. So my 11 is actually the first hour in the GMT time zone, or UTC. And that is why we get one right there, of course, 11 minus 10 is one. Okay, so you have that UTC version of each particular get method, all right? So we now have covered the getters, we can now move on to the setters. So these work in a very similar fashion. So for example, let's change the minutes of this, uh, of this time part. So we can say right here, d dot set minutes and pass in here something like 10, for example. Okay, let's also do set date and let's make the date uh, something like the 5th of August. I'm gonna then console.log the difference between, um, of course, before we set the new values and then after. So I'm gonna save this now and refresh and uh, what we get here is, of course, August 5th now, instead of the 2nd, and of course, this is now Monday instead of Friday. Um, also, of course, here, the minutes has been changed to 10 minutes. So, this is definitely uh, very useful stuff for uh, manipulating your date time or your date objects. And similar to the getters, um, you've also got a UTC version of your um, of your setters, so we can say, for example, d dot set UTC hours. Um, well, since we currently know that my UTC hours is is um is one or one a.m., um, if I was to make this four, we then expect my UTC hours to be set to, of course, four. Then my local hours is going to be, of course, eleven plus three. It's going to be fourteen. Okay, so I'm going to save this now. Refresh once again, and we can see here we get 14 or 2 p.m. And that is um, that is the setters with the date object. So the last thing I want to cover here is going to be uh, various ways to display or format your date objects. So let's go down here right away and say console.log. We're going to log out d.2iso string, and this one right here is really straightforward. It's going to give you an ISO 8601 formatted date time stream with um, well in in UTC. Okay, so I'm going to save this here, refresh, and we can see here this is the UTC version of the date object. Um, obviously, it is 4:10 a.m. like we set earlier, um, and this Z here represents UTC. Okay. So that is basically um, all that does, and of course, uh, this might be or is definitely very useful uh, when it comes to doing things like uh, making a call to an external API or doing things like that, where you sort of want a standard, uh, you know, version of time or point in time. Cool. So let's uh, move on now to the two locale string method. So this one's a bit interesting and uh, quite useful. So let's go down here and say console.log. We're going to say d dot two locale string. You've also got a few more here, but let's cover the two locale string method. So here, essentially, you're going to pass in um, a language tag. So for example, I'm going to log out two locale string and pass in the Australian language tag that is en dash au. Okay. Then I'm going to essentially just do the same thing and say en dash us, and now. It's going to log out uh, the date instance um, 
according to the Australian locale than according to the US locale. So things like the way dates and times are displayed typically in that region or locale. I'm going to save this here, refresh once again, and we can see down here, what we get is for the Australian time, uh, the first difference here I've noticed is apparently Australians write the PM AM part in lowercase, whereas in the US, uh, you guys do uppercase PM and uppercase AM. But more importantly or more noticeable here is the fact that Australians put the day of the month first, then the month. Obviously, Americans in the US um, will put the month first, then the day. So we can see here, of course, the two locale string method has changed the way it gets displayed based on the locale that you pass in. Now you're also able to actually um, pass in the time zone information to this method. So for example, let's go back here and pass in a second argument. This will be an options uh, object. So we can go inside here um, and just say here for one property, we're going to say time zone just like this. And we're going to say, for example, America slash Los Angeles. I believe it is spelt just like this. I could be wrong actually. Um, let's just give it a go. I'll uh, save this and refresh and what do we get? Yeah, cool. So there we go. So um, we have the time in the Los Angeles time zone. So very useful stuff, definitely. Um, I've actually chosen the Australian locale with the America Los Angeles time zone. Um, so it doesn't make too much sense logically, but um, there you go, you can specify which time zone to output the date time in. So very useful. Um, the last thing to cover here is going to be what happens when you actually uh, stringify using JSON, the actual date object. So essentially, let's go down here and simply say console.log json.stringify. We're going to pass in here an object with uh, a property called my date and the date value is going to be simply just the date instance. So we're going to see what the JSON stringify method does to the dates instance uh, when it gets passed in. So I'm going to save this here, refresh and we can see it gives you um, the date time string in that ISO 8601 format. So essentially, you're getting the return value of the two ISO string method uh, put in when you serialize the date instance with, uh, with json.stringify. And uh, that right there is the native JavaScript date object. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.